What is good everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this video, I wanna give you guys a full quick disclosure. This video is in no way, shape or form me telling you that you should or should not buy Neo stock. The whole purpose of this channel and this video included is literally just for me to give you both sides of the story. I wanna give you as many facts as I can so that you can make the best decision possible when choosing whether or not you should invest in this stock. And oftentimes that's going to include talking about both the downside and the upside. One of the biggest problems I've noticed with a lot of videos regarding electric vehicles or electric vehicle stocks is that the videos don't necessarily give you both sides of the story. Oftentimes what's going to happen is the majority of the video is going to talk about how this stock is doing great, it's only up from here, and, and the stock is just set to break new highs. That's just not often the case. And so whenever you wanna to choose to invest in a stock, you have to also look at the downsides that are available. If you want to, feel free to just go ahead and go down in the comment section and also add some of the points that you have. Because at the end of the day, this channel is for people to get the most amount of information they can about any certain stock before deciding whether or not they should invest in the stock. I'm going to go over some of the biggest positives for the stock, but I'm also gonna go over the biggest negatives. And in my opinion, the biggest negative factor that Neo stock has going for it towards the end of the video. So please go ahead and watch for the end and don't forget to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's finally get into the video. So for some of you that are not already familiar with Neo, just to give you a very quick overview of what the company does, they produce electric vehicles. More specifically, they produce five seater, six seater, and seven seater electric vehicles. And they also, do produce, they also do provide charging solutions, but the bulk of the revenue just comes straight from electric vehicles. The company was actually founded in 2014, and they had an IPO in 2018, and they ended up raising $1.8 billion from very successful affluent Chinese investors. Fast forward to today, and NEO had to go through an uphill battle from 2018 all the way to 2020. The stock wasn't really seeing much success, and arguably, almost ended up going bankrupt but now recently within the past few months there have been positive news related to the stock to where now it seems that neo might be in the best shape that it's ever been okay so we got three probably four big positives to talk about for neo stock and i'm going to rank them in order of importance the first one is improved financials Neo stock is arguably the best position in the company's entire history, and this all happened about a couple weeks ago when the company released its Q2 earnings. Now we're going to go through those, and we're going to look at pretty much every portion of Neo's financials have improved. Probably the biggest portion is its cash on its balance sheet. Now this is the biggest positive the company has going for it now that it didn't necessarily have um, a couple months ago or even a year ago. The second big positive is going to be improved deliveries. The company is expected, has been increasing its deliveries significantly over the past few years, and it's also expected to increase its deliveries going forward. So let's talk about that a little bit more later as well. The third big positive is that management is expecting increase in revenues as well as deliveries. So management's forecast overall does seem to be really positive, but you should always take this one with a grain of salt. I have yet to see management say, hey, we're not gonna do well at all. Usually management is going to tell you that they're going to do very well because it's good for the stock price. Unless, hey, it's obvious that the stock's not going to do too well, then management will have to give some guidance on that. And so last but not least, the fourth positive factor that Neo Stock does have is going to be its new battery as a subscription service, which is going to provide a lot more flexibility going forward for the stock. So without further ado, let's jump into these financials. Okay, so pretty much all the information we need to talk about the positive factors for NEO is going to be all in this file right here. And just for your information, this is a file that I actually obtained on the press release from NEO's own website. So right off the bat, we can see a quick snapshot here. The company was able to generate $526 million in revenue for the quarter. And this is great news because this is the best that NEO has performed since 2018. The next important thing here to look at is the deliveries. So Neo had a very bumpy start throughout 2018 and even 2019. So we can see here that the company had initially 3000 deliveries in 2018 and they had pretty decent amount of success here. And they were able to increase up to almost 8,000 deliveries in 2018 Q4. From there, they dropped off down to 4,000 in 2019. But throughout 2019, they actually saw 
a decent amount of increase all the way up to 8,000 deliveries. The only problem was that as Neo was picking up steam throughout 2019, they actually hit 8,000 deliveries, but shortly the quarter after, we all know what happened here in 2020 Q1, and the deliveries took a big hit. Now, after 2020 Q1, the company was fortunately able to have a sharp rebound to 10,300 deliveries in 2020 Q2. Now, this is great news for NEO. NEO has seen a huge increase within the last quarter of deliveries, and hopefully they can keep this up going forward. Okay, now arguably, in my opinion, this is probably the most important part of this whole page. NEO has pretty much done well in every portion of financials that you can think of. So total revenues were up to 526 million US dollars, and this is a 146.5% increase from 2019 Q2. Overall, cost of sales also was able to improve. So they came in at 482 million, but if you look here, it was only a 69.2% increase from the second quarter, which is okay because our revenue increased over 146.5% from the second quarter. So we're making more money than it's costing us, which is always a great thing. Now, the cool thing here is that even though they have a lot more sales, their operating expenses were actually able to decrease. So they decreased, so they came in at $77 million of operating expenses for 2020 Q2, and this decreased 58% from uh, 2019 Q2, which is, which is really good news. So overall, the company still has a loss from operations, which is one of the biggest downsides here. The company has not necessarily made a profit from their business, but with that being said, they are showing great improvements from last quarter and they were able to decrease their loss from operations. Okay, now the last biggest important factor here I think that's worth talking about for financials for NEO is their, their new cash balance. So NEO was actually able to catch a huge break over the course of the past few months. They actually were able to find an investor, more specifically the Chinese local government, that was actually able to give them $1 billion to go ahead and continue their operations. Now, this is huge for NEO. NEO was arguably on the verge of bankruptcy all throughout 2019, and they needed this. They needed, they needed an additional cash infusion in the business so they can go ahead and have more room to expand their product lines and continue to improve their margins see here that the company currently has 1.4 billion almost 1.5 billion dollars cash on the balance sheet and this is great news for neo this is a game changer this is what they need going forward but hopefully they can come out with the new product lines and they're able to generate a great amount of demand before this cash starts to run out again because this is not going to last a very long time this is probably going to last less than a year. So Neo really needs to think outside the box here and create alternative solutions for revenue. Now this $1 billion in cash coming from the Chinese local government also has, uh, also has a drawback to it. Now, the cost of this cash is that NEO has to pretty much conduct the majority of their operations in China. And this really makes it uncertain for the company going forward because overall plans for each of these companies, at the end of the day, the company should want to expand past China or past their, their domestic home state of operation. So if the company is able to expand, then that's automatically going to increase their revenues and it's going to increase the future prospects for the company. But now with this $1 billion help, which is great for the company, the only drawback is it's a little bit less certain that NEO might be able to expand. And we can automatically see the importance of expanding with Tesla here in the past couple months. Once Tesla was able to expand into China and move the factory to China, they actually increased a huge bump in sales and this is automatically reflected in their stock price. So expansion is crucial for all these EV stocks. And the last but definitely not least point to mention here about NEO is their new battery as a service offering. So on August 2020, NEO actually offers their battery as a service, which completely changes the game for NEO and actually makes its pricing a lot more competitive when looking at NEO vehicles versus Tesla's vehicles. So essentially what's happening here is the NEO Bass users can purchase a car without the battery. So what they're going to do is they're actually going to, they're pretty much leasing the battery. And now this leasing is done through a third party, but this company is actually a joint venture with NEO stock. So 
this new company is going to handle all the leasing, but essentially the people who are buying NEO's vehicles can actually lease these batteries. Now the benefits of this is that this is going to significantly reduce the purchase price. So this battery as a service line is going to be a huge benefit for the customer. They don't have to worry about replacing the battery and they don't even have to worry about the battery should battery lifespan decreasing. Only thing that they now have to pay for is a monthly lease fee of about $140 a month for the 70 kilowatt battery in the car. Now that's going to knock off about an estimated $10,000 off the vehicle's price. So what we can see here is if you use the ES6 as an example, the original cost for that vehicle is going to be 52 grand and that's going to automatically knock off $10,000 if the customer decides to go ahead and go ahead and use the battery as a service option. So the new vehicle's cost is $42,000, which makes this insanely competitive with Tesla's pricing. So now that we've gone over the positives for the stock, we can finally go over the risks. There's three big risks that we need to talk about before considering to invest in NEO stock. The first one is the valuation. The valuation still seems really high and we'll get into that a little bit more later. The second risk associated with the stock is the liabilities that are currently on the books. Even though the company got a billion dollars in cash, there are still a lot of liabilities on the books, which is going to make it very difficult for the company to operate going forward. The third risk is now going to be the chance that the company has to expand outside of China. And this is also associated with the $1 billion of cash that the company received. So I talked about this earlier on in the financials portion of the video. So I'm not really gonna spend much time talking about this in, in, this, po in this portion of the video, but just a really quick overview of that. Well, the company now received the $1 billion of cash from the local governments in China, but that's going to make it very difficult for the company to go ahead and expand outside of, outside of China. And we can really see just how crucial the expansion is for companies like if you look at Tesla, for example, when they went ahead and expanded into China, they were able to increase their production significantly and overall increase their revenue, which has dramatically been reflected in the company's stock price. This might be a little bit more difficult for NEO to do because of the, ne the new agreement they have made with the Chinese government and the Chinese authorities. Whenever considering investing in any type of stock, you should always know why the market is valuing the company the way they are. That's probably the biggest and most difficult thing to do because if you know and if you understand why the company is valued the way it is, how much people are willing to pay for the company and why, then you can find out, you can decide whether or not you agree with that ideology or you don't. And that ultimately will allow you to decide if you should or should not invest in the stock. The good news here is we know why NEO stock is valued what it is today. So if you do the math on this stock, the revenue that the company generated for just this quarter, as I talked about earlier in the video, was 526 million, which is huge progress and that's great. Now. The problem with this is if you multiply that by four to get the yearly amount of revenue that the company generates, if it was to maintain this performance, it's going to generate about $2.1 billion in revenue. Now, NEO's current market cap is $23 billion. The market is currently saying is that NEO is valued at almost 10 times its current sales for the year. And this is, by the way, this is the 526 million if the company is able to maintain this performance, which who knows, maybe they, are, maybe they will be able to, maybe they won't be. But we know that the company is valued at 10 times sales. Can you take a wild guess at what other company is currently valued at 10 times sales? Yeah, it's Tesla. What the market is saying is that NEO deserves the same valuation that Tesla stock is getting. This is, I'm not going to say whether this is right or wrong, but I'll just give you a little bit of food for thought that maybe can help you consider and rationalize within your own judgment of whether this is the right valuation or the wrong valuation. Majority of Tesla's premium is coming from its management, more specifically Elon Musk. Elon Musk was sent here from another planet to give us Tesla. At this point, I really even question if Elon Musk is human. The dude is just very brilliant. The only downside that people really have left when arguing against Elon Musk is that he is spread too thin and that he's focusing on too many different things at once. But nobody can disagree with the fact that he's a brilliant innovator. That's where a lot of Tesla's premium is going to. People are paying because of the vision of Elon Musk. But now the second point here that does separate Neo from Tesla is that 
Tesla is arguably not an electric vehicle company. Tesla is more than that. They're a technology company. So NIO is specifically an electric vehicle company. So one can also very easily argue that Tesla should receive that 10 times multiple on the basis that this is a technology company. NIO, once again, is not a technology company. So these are two different types of companies. Tesla just so happens to make the electric vehicles, but that's not all it's limited to. So just with that thought process, it's hard to see why these companies should both receive 10 times sales. So if you think a 10 times sale ratio makes sense for NEO stock as well, the only additional problem now is that, okay, the 10 times sales is currently almost what the company is valued at. So now for the valuation to increase, the company has to do one of two things. They either have to increase their revenue going forward, so take the already great performance that they've had for this quarter, and they pretty much need to do even better than that for you to still profit more off the stock. That's the first tip. Or the second thing is, the company needs to value NEO at more than just 10 times sales. So if sales were to stay what they are right now, then the company is going to have to value them at maybe 11, 12, 13 times sales. I see that as much less likely, and the probability that maybe NEO is able to increase their sales is probably a little more likely than that. Now expectations are going to be all the way up here for NEO because management just recently came out at the end of the earnings call and said that next quarter, we're going to go ahead and make in between 575 million to 600 million in revenue. This is just for the quarter. So that's great if it's actually able to happen. But now that management has set the expectation here, well, investors from Morgan Stanley, Goldman, are going to be looking at NEO to make sure that if they do hit these criteria, then hey, we can value the stock even higher. But since expectations are over here, that's a lot of room for error and NEO can no longer mess up. NEO has a limited amount of funding now that they've received from the Chinese government and this is only gonna last them about 12 months. So the combination of high expectations limited flexibility and funding is going to really make these next 12 months count for NEO, probably even the next quarter, because the expectations that management put out are now creating a level for the stock that needs to be met. And finally, the last switch to talk about are the liabilities in the balance sheet. The liabilities that are currently on the balance sheet are going to make it difficult for the company to operate because the company has over $3 billion in liabilities on the balance sheet and they also have $3 billion in assets, but most of these assets are not easily liquidated, which means that if something were to happen to the company, the company can't just sell these assets for cash. They have currently about $1.6 billion in cash on the balance sheet, but they have just as much of that in just debt, not liabilities, but just debt that they need to pay. So although the $1 billion in cash that they received from the outside investor was extremely helpful, NEO really needs to start gaining more market share and creating more revenue and ultimately more operating income so that the company can now have a much better financial situation. But this is going to be difficult going forward given the fact that Tesla's production in China is sitting at 200,000 and Tesla pretty much blows everybody else out of the water with its commanding 25% share of Chinese market share. So these are all things that really should be considered before investing in NEO stock. And I'm not saying that NEO stock is a bad investment, but I'm also not going to say it's a good investment as well. Again, the whole point of this channel is really just to provide you with as much of the facts as I can so that you can make the best decision possible. So if any one of you guys are watching this, and I'm sure that you guys also know there's other things to add to what I have mentioned earlier in this video, please go ahead and comment down below so other people can also just learn more about the stock and they can make a more informed decision. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. It took me a while to make, so please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks again. See you soon. Peace.